10 Things I Hate About Julia Stiles I hate that her I don't give a f attitude was not present in more 90s teen flicks. I hate that I totally forgot about the movie Save the Last Dance. I hate that she doesn't get the respect she deserves. I hate that I thought she was in that movie Swim Fan. I hate that she got stuck in generic romantic comedies for a time. I hate that her character in the Jason Bourne franchise never got her own spinoff. I hate that I haven't really seen much of her later work. I hate that she tricked me into liking Shakespeare as a teen. But most of all, I hate the way that I don't hate her. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. Oh, and I hate that I don't know what the f happened to her. So let's find out what the f happened to Julia Stiles. But to truly understand what the f happened to Julia Stiles, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when she was born on her birthday. 1981, New York City. As a teen, Julia Stiles landed the role of a cross-armed, nose-ringed hacker in season two of Ghost Rider. Also getting parts on shows like Promised Land, but it was in 1997 when she would share the screen with Brad Pitt by playing one of Harrison Ford's daughters in The Devil's Own. The next year, she turned up in M. Night Shyamalan's Hollywood debut, Wide Awake. And before she even had 10 credits to her resume, Julia Stiles got, and slayed, as the kids say, in the role of Cat in 10 Things I Hate About You, a modernization of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. I think she played the shrew, right? The shrew that needed to be tamed and only Heath Ledger could do it. But yeah, she plays the badass, doesn't give an F sister to the squeaky clean Bianca. And Styles ate it up, stealing every single scene, giving a truly versatile performance, bringing some of that artistic intellectualism to the role. Going from unlikable biatch to vulnerable and sympathetic over the course of the film. In her words, she found it important seeing a teenage girl be feisty and opinionated and be a fish out of water, but proudly. She marked herself as a serious presence on the screen. Nasty, but kind of approachable, with incredible chemistry with everyone she interacted with, especially the late great Heath Ledger. The acting skills of Julia Stiles would be recognized by the MTV Movie Awards, the Teen Choice Awards, and more. In addition to the miniseries The 60s, Julia Stiles landed another Shakespeare modern-day high school adaptation called O. Oh. It's a retelling of Othello. O. Oh. While it was planned for 1999 and would have given Stiles the perfect follow-up to 10 Things I Hate About You, unfortunately and tragically it was delayed for two years due to the Columbine school shooting. The studio just didn't feel like it was the right time. But don't worry, more Shakespeare would come. No, not the Freddie Prince Jr. movie Down to You, which is kind of far from Shakespearean, but as Ophelia in the movie Hamlet 2000. It was made in the year 2000, but I think Hamlet 2000 is a, is a better title. So we're gonna call it Hamlet 2000, and in Hamlet 2000, she was amazing. Spitting out all that Shakespearean stuff all over the silver screen, and again showing her love for the bard, she would soon enough find herself in a production of Twelfth Night, like on the stage. Like a real actress, I, I guess. Also, in the year 2000, Styles was lumped into the National Board of Review winning cast of State and Maine, introducing her to the world of David Mamet, a different kind of Shakespeare, I guess. By the end of the year, Julia Styles enrolled at Columbia, forcing her to find that balance between art and business and education and stuff. But it was the next year, 2001, which saw her first movie to gross $100 million worldwide. And she was the star. It was called Save the Last Dance, which she landed because of her drunk dancing scene in 10 Things I Hate About You. She plays the aspiring ballerina Sarah, and she underwent intense choreography lessons, which she called challenging and daunting. And unfortunately, years later, she would call her work in this movie Save the Last Dance cringeworthy. 
Dorothy. But actually, it was really respected in its time, and I, I now that I remember that she was in it, I, it is it is now uh, considered a beloved teen dance movie. I, I say so. Save the Last Dance would nab her a handful of low-tier but cherished awards, like MTV's Best Kiss and the Teen Choice Movie Actress. And you want to know how down-to-earth Julia Stiles was, or is? The limo to the MTV Movie Awards picked her up at her dorm! Ahead of the delayed release of that movie, oh, was a movie called Business of Strangers, which she earned a satellite nomination for Best Supporting Actress. There too would be Wicked, no, not that Wicked, another Wicked, which is like a quasi-possession movie. It premiered at Sundance in 1998 and went to DVD. It's wicked awesome! While still focusing on her English major at Columbia, Julia Stiles got a shot at a major franchise. The Bourne franchise. The, the, in the first one, called The Bourne Identity. Playing the technician named Nikki, in a role that would be a series mainstay. It's a limited and basically a thankless role, but she's freaking great at it and she clearly left an impression because she was intended to be killed off. But the filmmakers knew they had something with this actress so they kept her alive in case they made sequels to this born thing. Following a short stint on the stage in the vagina monologues, again, it's not exactly Shakespeare, Styles would take a safe but challenging lead in a movie called A Guy Thing, also playing the title character in a direct-to-video film called Carolina. She played Carolina in Carolina. 2003 ended on a strong note, in Julia Stiles' eyes at least, with the movie Mona Lisa Smile, as part of an ensemble cast of strong, strong female, female characters. characters. Partly in reaction to criticism over feminist ideals, Julia Stiles penned an op-ed for The Guardian the next year on that topic of feminism and the role of girl power in cinema. It's a world where you're judged by what you say and think, not by what you look like. And she made some excellent points. And remember, this was before the days of all this Mary Sue stuff. Back when Hollywood wasn't exactly screwing up the idea of a strong, strong female, female character. character. Julia Stiles didn't exactly care about that stuff, she just wanted to play interesting characters who happened to be female, I, I guess. 2004 had the romantic comedy The Prince and Me. I think she played me. And then came the second film in that Bourne series, where her character was born again in the Bourne Supremacy. Which, yeah, this franchise would eventually change the way action movies were made, for better and worse. And in this second installment of the Bourne franchise, The Bourne Supremacy, Julia Stiles was able to show us that she's capable of more. More screen time, more cool things to say, more involvement in the story, and more range. Just more, more, more. That same year, she would return to the world of David Mamet, starring opposite Aaron Eckhart in a London production, Oleana. 2005 brought her tragic turn as a doomed waitress in a movie called Edmund, as well as a movie called A Little Trip to Heaven, and a trip to the collegiate stage, graduating from Columbia University. But celebration would halt quickly because she was cast in that dreadful, pointless remake of The Omen. The next year was 2007, and that would again see her be reborn again in the Bourne franchise. The third one, this time they called it Bourne Ultimatum, where Jason Bourne had an ultimatum. Once again pushing the boundary of action movies and editing and shaky camera stuff, and Julia Stiles was there to hold it all together. She would continue learning about herself, in 2008's Gospel Hill, this time playing a teacher, and she says that this was a role that helped her get over her New York City edge. She had too much edge, apparently. But that edge would return with her Broadway debut in, again, Oleana, challenging herself yet again on the stage. It was around this time that Julia Stiles began to wonder what her place was in the industry and in the universe, she would say, My frustration was feeling like nobody knew what to do with me. You know, I had some success in my 20s, and now I'm in a different place, and I really don't fit in anywhere. 
Julia Stiles would try to stay true to herself and the characters she wanted to play, bringing audiences strong yet believable female characters, many of which were victims who wouldn't let themselves become victims, if you know what I mean. Like in 2010, she appeared as a rape survivor who becomes partners with Dexter on the Showtime series Dexter. This was Julia Stiles' first major role on television, a medium she would learn to love, which she says that there's more challenging characters to play on TV. And this character on the fifth season of Dexter is undoubtedly one of her defining performances, earning her Golden Globe and Emmy nominations. Well deserved. In 2012, Julia Stiles nabbed a Critics' Choice win and a SAG nomination as part of the Silver Linings Playbook cast, where she plays Jennifer Lawrence's sister. Then she would appear in another wonderful ensemble cast in the brilliant comedy called It's a Disaster. It all takes place in one location and is driven by the performances. And one of those great performances is Julia Stiles, of course. Then she would appear on a pair of TV movies 2012's Midnight Sun, and 2013's The Makeover. Then she challenged herself and her morals and her views as a human and an actress by playing a strong-willed prostitute in a web series called Blue. She then gave supporting turns in Between Us and Closed Circuit, both came out in 2013. There was another direct-to-video film called Out of the Dark, and she nailed a three-episode stint on The Mindy Project while getting roles in The Great Gilly Hopkins, and Blackway, both in 2015, playing yet another resilient victim of harassment and abuse. 2016 brought something called Misconduct, and her most recent outing as her Jason Bourne character, Nikki Parsons, in a movie called Jason Bourne. This time, yeah, they just called it Jason Bourne. And like we said, this was a role that helped build into something far more than what it was meant to be, all because of the skills of Julia Stiles. When asked about developing such roles as this, Julia Stiles would say, I only accept a part if there's something I can contribute to the character. Sure, she's done a lot of crap, like direct-to-video stuff like The Drowning, and had very small bits in Trouble in 2017, and a TV series called Riviera, but then she'd surprise you by popping up in a mature role as a journalist in a film that I hear is good called Hustlers in 2019. And yes, this was a J-Lo showcase, but the critics could not ignore Miss Styles, saying her role was crucial. So yeah, nowadays, of course, she's taking on more mature roles, and when asked about taking on these mature roles, she would say this. I feel like the opportunities for me and my peers are better as we get older. So yeah, in the past few years, she's consistently worked, playing a doctor in the God Committee in 2021, and she would have one more attempt at horror after that horrible Omen remake with 2022's Orphan First Kill. And her voice would crop up too, appearing in an animated series based on How to Train Your Dragon. As of 2023, she would co-star alongside Heather Graham in Chosen Family, and currently leads Amazon's The Lake somehow making her character, an unpleasant piece of work that will do anything to get her way, actually likable, and while not pleasant, someone to admire, in a way. Hey, wow, look at this, another Julia Stiles quote. When I was 17, I had a lot of teenage angst, and I was always told to be more bubbly, to lighten up, to stop being so serious. So there was a lot of pressure on this young lady, but still, she was able to take a girl next door persona and mix it with, you know, more of a punk rock appeal and just made it work for her. We loved her because there was something different about her. You know, in the days when her peers were a little more perky and preppy, she uh, kind of scared us, but in a good way, where you respected her. So maybe Julia Stiles doesn't need to play better characters. Maybe. We need to write better characters that are like Julia Stiles. And yeah, she was extremely successful in her teenage years in those teenage movies, but she had no choice but to age out of it because you can't be a teenager forever. That would be weird. And even though her presence now has dwindled, she's still out there making her mark. And that's because she had the maturity and the seasoned edge long before her counterparts. Not many have the style 
nothing that compares to Julia Stiles. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Julia Stiles, cause she's doing just fine.